Cool. All right, so this is Hugh Mayers, I Caliber Man podcast, and today I'm joined by two esteemed ladies, by Fiona and Naomi, who run a uh, IG channel, and they uh, have their own chat show. We're going to find out a little bit more about what they do, because much of what they do kind of overlaps with some of the conversations I have about male-female dynamics, about relationships, about mental health or psychological well-being, taking care of self, elevating self. And so I'd actually like to welcome you both, ladies, Fiona, Naomi, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for having us. Hi. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. I've been looking forward. Been looking That's forward. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, hey, why don't we make the best use of time? Jump right into it. Jump in okay. with both feet. Yeah? yeah. Can you tell me a little bit? We'll start off with yourself, Naomi. Tell me a bit about yourself and in light of your mm-hmm. IG um career or, or, or endeavors and stuff like that and I'm gonna go on to foot for you on that aspect. okay so yeah our Instagram handle uh, my IG is called sisters talk about um and yeah basically yeah me and Fiona we're cousins we si- we call ourselves sister cousin friends <laughs> <laughs> that's our relationship we're sisters we're cousins and we're friends like our relationship is real tight and um, the idea, how it all came about is basically like, yeah, we talk on the phone all the time. And <laughs> some of the conversations that we have are, well, a lot of the conversations are so in depth and deep. And we always like go back to like saying, I wish that we heard more people speaking like this or what are other people's opinions on these subjects and, you know, like we would love everyone to come together and talk and that's men and women, black men and women, you know. Um, so, yeah, basically that's how we came together. Just like, you know what, I think we should bring our our telephone conversations to Instagram. Yeah, let's do that. And then, um, yeah, we started, um, it would have been the beginning of last year through lockdown. Um and yeah, um, the response has been, yeah, we've been really well received. And um, we always make it very clear that, well, I'll say one, our approach is very is very unapologetic. Mm. You know? so we're going to find out a bit more about the unapologeticness. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have a very unapologetic um, approach. We're very upfront, you know, we're, we're open, like we're not always going to agree on the same thing. So it's a really open conversation. And like, second of all, um, it's a safe space. Because that's mm-hmm. what, as black people, we don't have much of that. Okay. We don't have much of that. So we're like, okay, yeah, we're online, but you know the people that know us know us and they know how we roll but then there's others that don't really know us and they're coming into the space so we keep on reminding everyone this is a real safe space and like speak your truth like share your opinion like what's your view or what's your experience and yeah we've spoken about so many different topics and it's been a really fun beautiful ride and I've I, you know, I feel truly blessed that I'm doing this with my sister, cousin, friend, because, <laughs> you know, like we're bringing our vibe to others and everybody feeds into that, you know, and it's a re- really beautiful space that we've created or that we're still creating. So, yeah, that's my little piece for now. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So I'm going to come to Cozzy now. I'm going to come to Cozzy. Yeah. So Fiona, tell me a little bit about yourself and what is the most memorable topic you think you've covered from like from your perspective okay well a little bit about myself I am a life coach I am also a lock technician so I do hair um and I also work in finance <laughs> so yeah that's me in a nutshell <laughs> all right um, <laughs> Divergent, divergent. Also, I do that. I'm part of a dance group as well. So we do dance performances and perform at carnival and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So yeah, so oh, this has been so many. T- wow, hang on, there's been so many. Give topics. me a hot one. Come on, give me a hot one. Come on, give me a hot topic that you love discussing. Go on, Fiona. Go on. <laughs> this is a no holes barred space. This two is you a. You know safe- what? You know right? Okay, for me, I think the one on we did on colorism. That was a mm-hmm. good one for me, and also. The recent ones we've done in oh. regards to um, the ones we did at our event actually, because we did mm-hmm. it was regards to a the Steve Harvey show, and it was a comment that someone made, in, and it was in regards to a woman that kept attracting the same type of man. So it's literally women taking accountability of the men that you're attracting. Mm. That topic, and also. Um, the noise when how comfortable people feel when making noises and having sex with their partner. That was a that was a very good topic. I did enjoy that. <laughs> we may, we may, I enjoyed may, that one. We may explore these uh, each of these in some <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, those are yeah, those are mine. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty important subjects or pretty relevant. But um, you know what caught my attention was this mm-hmm. one um attracting the same person persons but like almost like the same person and um yes yeah. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's something that i've come across in terms of conversations and mm-hmm. even in the therapeutic space and that like there's this kind of idea that we as human beings we have a script about ourselves the kind of self-image that we develop when we're younger and then we go to different spaces and then we just wash but they call it wash spin rinse and repeat like we just do mm-hmm. the same until we get a lot of similar results whatever that might be mm-hmm. whether it's successful or unsuccessful but we're kind of following certain patterns what's so what's your thoughts about that ladies tell me a little bit about your idea about that i would say i would say i tend to agree and i feel as women we have a sense of we'll meet somebody we don't necessarily think at that time we I think we unconsciously attract the same person. I think me and Amy yeah. had this conversation yesterday, so it's so mm-hmm. ironic. Mm-hmm. That we, I think we unconsciously attract the same type of person. However, mm-hmm. because we're females, we have the tendency to think that we can fix things. We yeah. can check. Uh, we're okay. Oh, you, you see the little red flags, but you think, mm-hmm. oh, it's okay. That's fine. Mm. No, that's okay. Or I'll bypass that. Or no, it's fine. I can I can try and fix that. I can work with that. I can work. No, the mm. red flag is a red flag. Is mm. a red flag. It's not changing its color. Mm. Why do you want to try to fix it? Yeah. If it's a I pattern don't... that you've seen or you've been in before, mm-hmm. remove yourself. You've you've seen the pattern and you know it's not. And you've seen the pattern. You know the steps. You know the outcome. Why are you going to put yourself through that again? Mm. And the thing is, I am, I, I am guilty. I am no any way, shape, or form. I'm going to yeah. sit here and say, ah, da 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 da, and you need to. I'm guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you've been there. You wore a t-shirt. You wore a t-shirt. Yeah. I'm guilty with one yeah. the t-shirt. I've done it so yeah, yeah. many, so many times. Same here, and always like looking looking into the future the potential we always yes. look, at, look look for or look into the potential like you know with there's certain lines that have been given to us and we don't hold on to those and believe this is what the man is saying mm-hmm. we believe all the the extra like the you know it's like being romanticized and everything else that makes us feel good and then we and we forget about this key points that have been mentioned but yeah. then yeah we romanticize everything and then we think oh but this has got potential and the future this and he wants this and I can see myself in him doing this and it's just like no look at look at the now look yeah. at the now you know is, so, is, yeah, it, but, is, it, is yeah. it something like is it common then um where a man might meet a woman in a sort of casual situation and he tell her, he kind of articulate, well, this is where I'm at and this is what I'm looking for. But in mm-hmm. her mind, he projects, yeah. on, he projects what her desires are and yeah. it says, you know, more or less, this is what we're looking for in the future because this is what he wants, but really it's what she wants. This is a kind of breakdown in communication. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, there's... um, And another thing I'll say I've been guilty of is... um. 
telling a man what it like giving descriptions like saying what it is that I want you know so that they can behave a certain way but that only that lasts for a short space of time and mm-hmm. they'll do that they'll do that for the for a certain amount of time so that they get you hooked and then when they go to they go back to who they really are and yeah. then you're hooked on who they've been showing you so then it makes it hard for you to leave because you're like yeah well he was like this with me and he did this and he did this and we went oh, here okay. and he said yeah. This, yeah you know i understand then, i understand yeah, so yeah then, what you're saying is a facade. you say there's a facade you, you've been sold a facade and then the person yeah. reverts to their real person but you're you fell in love with the facade so you're waiting for that to you're waiting for that facade to show up and again like the good old yeah, days yeah yeah, yeah. No, no, that's so not the real what i've learned from what i've learned from that now is to stop giving like descriptions and giving you know like whole heap of sentences saying like what it is that i want like you know, yeah. uh, more like give a description of, um, well, not a description, but say like the characteristic, you know, mm-hmm. instead of saying, oh, you, you know, I'd like to do this, or I'd like to go here and da, 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 you know, because yeah, that only lasts for a certain amount of time. Okay, okay. So, yeah. so let me ask this then, what's the biggest challenge you think in terms of like, I guess from a UK black perspective, we could talk gender politics, yeah in a way, but if we were to sort of boil it down just for today like we were to boil it down to what's going on between the black man and a black woman in the uk what's what's going on there what do you think or some of the things that are going on there you see me you know i'd say the biggest thing is and it's something that we're going to touch on in our next um insta live and for mm. me in the uk the biggest hindrance i personally feel is feminism yep oh yep. that's yep. Yeah. I didn't expect that, but if you could yeah. elaborate, yeah. that would be ever, that would be, it would be ever so kind to elaborate. I mean, the reason that. why I say that <laughs> is because there's a feminism in, I don't need the man, I can do it all by myself, I'm a high-powered woman, um, yeah, I am right, I can do it, I've built this, I've got this, don't need no man in my life, I, the man ain't shit, don't really want one, I can have a family by myself, I can raise yeah. that family by myself, a man is not needed. Mm, you started mm. that movement yeah, yeah because it wasn't so. a black woman yeah, <laughs> if you go to the caribbean if you go to africa where's that movement mm. and what percentage of them are married mm-hmm, mm. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 that feminist ideas are kind of like disrupted yeah it. man oh, and it's kind of like <laughs> in regards to it's even brought not even just the black family but like the nuclear family in general that's kind of like what where is that nuclear family you don't really see it anymore yeah yeah Yeah. and especially in terms of the the black king and the black queen as well you have a lot of these females like i said independent woman i don't need a man don't want a man listening to all these songs but when you switch out the women who were singing them songs to you they are happily married with their (laughs) husband up in their house doing the chores cooking them dinner being the wife what is it about art in our community in the black community that we take art too seriously you know like you have I don't know, in, in the hip hop world, right? You have a middle class kid um, come on the mic and start saying about the struggle and talking about life as a black man. And, you know, and he came from some background, yeah? And um, he don't live that life. You know what I mean? Or we have a rapper that, that makes money, don't live those kind of life, but they talk about always doing certain things on the corner and on the block and carrying this. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of like similar with the, with the women in terms of the kind of feminist ideology that that, you yeah. know? Um, step to all the left, to the left. Be, be a married woman thinking about to the left, to the left, like you said, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. All of these things have been made very popular. Yeah. It's because it's all become popular culture. Mm-hmm. And there's, I feel as though with that, with this culture, there's like a bullying tactic with it as well. You know, so it's just What do you mean? Like, what do you mean? But who's getting like, bullied? Who is bullying and who is getting bullied? I'm gonna say like there's people that they need and they want the numbers and they will make other people feel inadequate if they don't chip in and believe and have that same standpoint. 
Ah, uh, because I can like a pressure, a group thing pressure, like you yeah, gotta be on yeah, there's, there's a lot of pressure and it's like I had a conversation the other day and um like this particular friend, she knows how I'm stays, how I stay. So, you know, she'll ask me very direct and <coughs> different questions. And um we spoke on feminism and um she asked me what was my view on my view on um being submissive. That's a nice, that's a nice loaded term. Mm. Pardon? That's a nice loaded term, submissive. That's a nice provocative yeah, yeah, term. Yeah, yeah. And she asked me about my view on being submissive and like the way it was being introduced to me in this conversation, I know her view was that being submissive, it's kind of like a negative, you know, it's, it's a negative thing to be or um, in a relationship. But I was saying to her that, I have no issues with being submissive and the the word is being stretched and used out of context. Mm-hmm, Too mm-hmm. many people see being submissive as though it's to be someone's slave. But then on the flip side, there are some men that will treat the woman or want to. Do you know what I mean? They want a slave, but it's just like, if you break the word down, it doesn't mean that. It's like, I in my relationship in my house you know but i'm in a um loving relationship i want that man to lead but then i have to take accountability for who i'm requiring to lead me so if i you know at some point and i'm you know it's just like when women are saying oh um black men ain't shit or that guy ain't shit Da, 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 excuse my language just like yeah but you chose that man to to lead you do you know what I mean so it's just yeah, like yeah, take yeah. responsibility it, it it goes both ways so it's just like yeah I, I have no issues with being submissive but then at the same time men can be submissive also but we're just the way that we are wired we're wired differently so what I do for my man is not exactly what he's going to do for me. And I shouldn't um, expect him to act like me. I don't, there's not supposed to be, well, in my eyes, two women in the same house. So he's not, he shouldn't be acting like me and I shouldn't be acting and behaving hit like him. You know? in, I think in, 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 in Jamaica, they, um, they say two bull can't live in one pen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And you know? in this day and age, there's too many bulls. There's too many bulls. I don't, me in a relationship, I don't need to be leading with the masculine energy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I want my man to protect me. Oh, you guys are controversial. You guys are, con- whoa. Yeah. whoa. I, 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 I told let me you, I'm no, apologetic. Wait, 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 and just, to, yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, just to touch on what Naomi said in regards of being submissive, because like she's saying, the context that a lot of women see it as is to be weak. But in a relationship, that is not it. Because in a relationship, when you look it up, it's literally saying it allows it allows you to be strong enough to open up your heart to others and consider the other person's desires. Mm-hmm. It's got nothing mm-hmm. to do with being weak. But we mm. that word is we connect it with weakness. Yeah. But you see, you see, maybe there's something about culture because I would I would argue that in in our cultures in like Caribbean culture, particularly like from a UK perspective. The word strong, when you say, and I'm a strong black woman, it, it doesn't really mean strong means actually I'm patient. Actually, before I address certain situations, I might think about timing. I might yeah. think about the impact on my words, the power of my mm-hmm. words, influence this man by, by, by being feminine, for example. And I, you know what I mean? Like an influence in a positive way. I think strong black woman means I'm confrontational. I pull out yeah. my ear, ready to have a scrap, or I'm, I'm mm. assertive, assertive. Like that's what strong yeah. means. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad you've brought that up because, yeah. because I was speaking to her, I was having a conversation with my brother the other day. And I said, Fiona, the thing is, was it my brother or maybe it was someone else? Because I have so many conversations with people and my memories that are great sometimes. But the word strong, I remember they were saying, but you only hear that really in the strong black woman, strong black woman. If you go to the Jamaica, who's saying strong black woman? It's like, yeah. 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 Black, we women, yeah, I do what I do. But yeah, like you mm-hmm. said, you strong black woman, yeah, can be as confrontational, aggressive, yeah, it's, 
I've words, using, man, uh, words. Very I've powerful. Because I think of the elders. I'm, I mean, I think of the elders that grew me up, the women that were, I would have called mm. my aunts, even if they weren't blood aunts, but they were like aunts in my mum's circle and people that I had to call auntie, yeah? So yeah, so yeah. In the 70s and 80s, right? As a, as a yeah. school kid. I didn't think of them as no weak women, but they weren't masculine or they weren't always ready to like have a fight or, you know, wilding out on men and stuff like that. They were still feminine, but they weren't always fool. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They had a different energy, a different elegance about them, but they were like, no, these are definitely women. These are ladies. They're ladylike, but you know what I mean? Mm. So I wouldn't have considered them to be weak either. You know what I mean? But exactly. yeah, somewhere, somewhere exactly. where they ate easy with nothing going on but the rent and no scrubs. Mm, yeah. Vibration, <laughs> yeah. Vibration, yeah. This whole strong, strong took on a different connotation, you know, like, or it just yeah, came yeah. at that time. And, and like you said, in reg- a music has a lot, in regards to culture and the black culture, music has a lot, a big part to play in it, mm-hmm. especially <clears throat> in terms of, like, the name it touched on it in, what they how 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 do you let me put it again um what they allow us or what they put forward for us to listen to so Mm -hmm. for example the big record producers the films and the stuff that we see on television all that kind of thing paves the way and so unconsciously as we're children we're growing up Mm. we're seeing all this stuff on the television Mm. we're listening mm-hmm. to all this music we're listening to all these beyonce's these cardi b's we're listening we're seeing all this on the tv and we're thinking oh okay yeah i'm independent mm. don't need a man okay yeah. i'm a strong black woman don't need a man okay mm. the boy's seeing the hip-hop is seeing all the all this kind of culture because remember that as a record producer see it that's what sells yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Definitely, that's what that sells. What, that is what that is what sells. Mm. And, and, cra- and and they what do they we're say? Living what is- we're living in capitalism, so you know what I mean. They're yeah. not thinking about what's in the best interest of the family exactly, or what's they're not. They're socially exactly. uplifting or anything of that nature. They are thinking about money. Sales. Say yeah. they're just thinking of sales. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The word yeah. family does not exist to them. Mm-hmm. If we really do you know what I mean? Like, if we really was to come together and protest, we, we would be making sure that we're connected, do you know what I mean, as a family. But their intention is to break up the family, is to break yeah. down the Black family. Mm-hmm. And the more of us that clock on to that, the more powerful we will be and can be, you know? But mm-hmm. their every intention is to break down the family. And it's working. <laughs> yeah, it's working. It's working. Because everyone, mm. do you know what I mean? This whole independence and I can do it all on my own and, you know, like not having anyone to call on. It's just like everyone is becoming so spaced out. And it's just like when you're really in need, who is there? Or even when you're not in need, who is there? Who's, there? Who, who's loving on you and who's allowing you to love on them? You know, so is it, create, so is it creating bitterness? And I'm almost, you know, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that word. Would you say there's a gender war? Would you say there's a gender war then? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yes. It's, it's so divided. It's ridiculous, yeah. and I'm not here for it at all. I'm Mm-mm. not here for it. Anyone that brings that nonsense to me, oh gosh. It's a dis- it's a deep discussion. I'm like, don't ever bring yeah, the, the divided agenda towards me and think I'm going to be here for it. I've never been here for it and I never will be. And I, I always say and I'll keep on saying there's no future me without a black king and there's no future black kings without me. Yeah. And without, do you know what yeah, I mean? Without yeah, black, yeah, yeah. black queens, do you know what I mean? So forget all of that. I don't need a man and I don't need a woman. Let's come together. together. Let's un- understand and learn about listen, one yeah. man, you know what? This is, and this listen is to each other because that, this is that, an amazing that, perspective you know this is an amazing perspective and i feel yeah, like yeah, the time has gone so other. quick the time has uh, gone so quick yeah but yeah. Well, although we're winding down i actually want to give you fiona the last um tape before we finish we're gonna have to meet another day we're gonna have to come back in the studio but um <laughs> yeah. come on, give, us a, give us a closing take on this gender war we're probably gonna have to come back and discuss gender war we all been well but l- let me get your last take your takeaway message on this but literally what Naomi literally what Naomi said, I ain't here for it either. There's the gender war is going on. It's so 
obvious if your eyes are open you can see it um and i feel that's why we are divided they're trying to divide us to break up that family keep us apart especially the black man and the black woman and that was one of the reasons why we do sisters talk about when we not how that's not really how we started but we realized on doing it this is actually what we're doing because we don't speak to each other as black men and women we speak at each other we don't listen mm. listening is an art form we all think we can listen no we don't because when someone's talking and they don't say something you like you've already got in as soon as they say something you don't like you're not listening to anything else they say you're mm. ready with your quip you're ready you all you've already got in your head what you want to say before they finish listening before they finish mm -hmm. saying what they're saying mm -hmm. we need mm -hmm. to learn to listen to each other let that man speak his whole truth mm -hmm. listen let that woman speak her whole truth because when we speak when we listen there's going to be something in there that you didn't realize and that you actually agree with Mm. And I will bring it down, for example, Kevin Samuels. I never mm. really listened to the brother, right? I said, but I was about, I probably listened to little clips here and there, so I wasn't really, didn't really know what the man was about. But I don't know, all these women were going, eh, no, no, didn't like him, is down on women, is down on this, down on that, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, you know, my brother sent me one of his shows, and I listened to the show, and I watched the woman, and I went, I said, no, I said all these women, that I've mm -hmm. got all these negative peep things to say about him, they're in their feelings, come out of your feelings, because he's mm -hmm. not speaking to you. He's speaking to the woman that is on that lie with him at that moment. And mm -hmm. everything he's saying to me is truth. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Now that's powerful, that's powerful. I think that what I've learned today, or not, not even what, not learned, but what you reminded me of is the yeah. way that people are triggered sometimes, that we're triggered. Yes. And we're saying our feelings, mm -hmm. right? We aren't really listening to that, say, let that person's opinion and perspective marinate so I can learn something. Let that person's mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. tr truth or what they're articulating resonate more. It's like, you know what? I've got my rebuttal ready because I don't yep. actually like it. Yeah, you know? exactly what it is. understanding, exactly and I think that's I think that's what we're trying to do. That's what I definitely I'm trying to do with the High Caliber Man podcast is to create yeah. more. And that's why I brought you you queens on. Now, although the time has gone very short, yeah. I mean the time has gone so quickly, and I've enjoyed this immensely. But I'm gonna have to request you guys back. So of um, course. But I really okay. appreciate your time and your perspectives, and um, hope yeah. to, that we can do this again real soon. But we can oh, do this thank you so soon. much. Bless. Blessing, thank Bless you. Up, it's been yeah? a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. you take care. Take care. Bye. 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 <clears throat>